Aloha Kako. <laughs> Welcome to the National Museum of the American Indian. Hi. I don't you can stay. I love I love the sound of children. Especially ones who are trying to upstage me from the audience. No. Um, welcome to Celebrate Hawaii. Thank you all for coming. How many of you came yesterday? Because I think there's some super fans here. Oh, yeah. There's one. Um, I would <laughs> Thank you for coming to Celebrate Hawaii with us here at the National Museum of the American Indian. Um, I am going to start off by acknowledging the ancestral caretakers of Washington, D.C. and surrounding area, Piscataway people. Were you asking me something? <sighs> yeah, you don't have to be that quiet. It's fine. We're all learning here. Um, I was talking about Piscataway people, though. Those are the native people of this area that were living in Washington, D.C. at the time of contact. Um, and many of their descendants still live here in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, and if you want to learn more about Piscataway people and the other local communities in and around Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland. There is a small exhibit on the second floor outside of uh, the Bank of Elevators called Return to a Native Place. So even though we are celebrating Hawaii, you have an opportunity to learn a little bit about the native pe people of this place. So we're here for a talk demonstration. What is Lua? Um, you don't have to tell me. These guys are going to tell us. Um, and we have uh, Pakui Alua here to tell us what Lua is, and I am going to introduce their Alohe, Umikai, and um, yeah, you ready? He's ready! Ready. That's a frame of mind. He yau mi ali loa lahana o kala kaua kanihu ho kala o kamapua o pākui a loa noho maila i kaimuki aina kaulana o kaimuki I don't know where kaimuki is from here kaimuki o kekeki a Douglas kai o waiahinu moko o keave laua o lahela kanani mai oli king o waimea moko o keave he ola aloha Oh, very good. Thank you for that reply, Aloha. Uh, I introduced myself in, in more of a traditional manner rather than just uh, Aloha or Vilina uh, because that was uh, customary in Kahiko. And when I use the term Kahiko, I'm referring to the ancient days before uh, Western contact. So you'll have some reference when I start to talk and forget uh, that I'm uh, referring to Kahiko uh, versus the modern days. But the, uh, the top of, uh, topic of the day is, uh, what is Lua? Okay. Uh, anybody want to take a stab at what is Lua? I'm, I have to uh, shade my eyes because uh, the sun is very bright here. <laughs> anybody want to take a stab at it? Okay, if not, I'm going to, oh, yes. I'm sorry? Martial art. Okay, that's good. Okay, the, there are two uh, literal meanings of uh, the word lua. Uh, one of them is the, a pit. So anything, a hole with a bottom on it. Okay, anybody here gone to a luau before? Yeah, so your luau's, you had the, the ka lua pig. So you heard that term lua in there again. That's because you, uh, they cooked the pig in an emu, which is a pit. Yeah. So uh, with that... Uh, Sect meaning uh, is number two. So the first one is a pit, and the second meaning is two. And uh, it's from that number two that the uh, lua or the practitioners of the martial art take its meaning because of duality. So the hidden meaning behind um, the definition of two is duality. Where there is hard, there is soft. Where there is flexible, there is um, uh, rigid. Uh, where there is uh, force, there is counterforce. And so Lua takes its, its um, basis from that counterforce. So using the, the force of your opponent to assist you in striking him harder, okay, or her. Lua was for men and women. <laughs> uh, before we go further with uh, 
uh, Lua itself and a very brief description of, of today. Uh, was Lua versus Kahiko. I wanted to have uh, four members that uh, I'm very proud of and uh, hopefully they were proud of coming up uh, to join me here in, the, in uh, Washington, D.C. So the four members of the, our PA that came up with me. The first one is Vela. Uh, because uh, 
Uh, my dad left us when I was very young, and so my mom was really the foundation of my became what I become. And so I pay respect to that uh, that area. She she was born and raised. Um, so I referenced this rain that comes down into that area called Kaua no No. Uh, it's this pelting rain. It's a specific kind of rain that comes down and stings your skin. Um, and so that's one of the things I talk about. And also uh, this river that runs down to the ocean, but when it, it's two water masses that come together and the river remains uh, two halves as it flows into one. It's, it's two different colors as it comes down um, to the ocean. Uh, so mahalo for allowing us to come, and much mahalo to Boba for kind of sponsoring this, and uh, the uh, enemy on the staff here, uh, and Boba for uh, trusting us to come and, and be part of this as an extreme privilege for us. So mahalo. Uliahi, how come you always last? introductions of themselves were a little aggressive, uh, and that was intended. Um, they also described where they're from and some uh, significant um, points uh, there uh, uh, of their birthplace. And it was very important to do so uh, for many reasons, but uh, if you can imagine two armies in a battlefield facing each other, and uh, uh, each of the armies would send out their lanakila, their uh, best warriors. And uh, so maybe these four would go out and introduce themselves to the opposite uh, uh, army. And if there was a close relationship, uh, either through family ties or through uh, other battles or other uh, circumstances, uh, the battle may not uh, have ensued, okay? Because they recognize that there was a better relationship that they should uh, amend or they should be uh, continuing. So they would end up honing each other. That was the touching of noses uh, as traditional. And they would back off and uh, continue their work you know, without a battle. If there was bad relationship, uh, whether it be within the family or outside the family, then the battle would ensue. But it's important to know who you are. It's important to know where you came from in order to make sure that everybody else does. So that's how they introduce themselves. And that uh, vigor and the uh, aggressiveness that they're showing uh, is because it's also a taunt to your opponent uh, army, making sure that they understand that you're strong, you're powerful, and uh, sometimes you'll see strikes that indicate what they're gonna do to you if you attempt to cross the line, okay? So that was the Hawaiian equivalent of aloha. Back then, back then, Kahiko days. 
the, uh, the, the, the art of lua, or the Hawaiian uh, martial arts, as it's called, uh, is, was primarily an offensive art. It was an art to uh, break bones, to uh, dislocate bones, to uh, paralyze uh, your victim. And through that offensive, it co becomes very good defense. Because if you could break the guy's bone before he could get to you, that, that was a good defense, right? Uh, but uh, the origins of Lua is believed to come, it hasn't been totally verified, believed to come from the India, uh, from India area through uh, Southeast Asia and through Polynesia uh, up to Hawaii, which is part of Polynesia. And that was a very long time ago. We don't even know the, the years, but uh, the Hawaiians are believed to be landing uh, 19, uh, about 900 AD and to the Hawaiian Islands. The Hawaiian Islands consist of more than just the eight that you may be familiar with. And there are 132 islands total from uh, Hawaii Island at the south end all the way up to the north end of Midway. Uh, the eight major islands are the ones most people are familiar with. Today, or I should say in Kahiko, the uh, warriors of Lua were chosen by birthright and by your, uh, and the last presentation I said by attitude. Okay, and uh, uh, not all royalty was taught Lua. You had to have that proper attitude. The commoners and the, the Makainana and the Kawa were not taught Lua. And those that learned the Lua held a higher standard. They were like the special forces uh, of today, but they had more mana because they knew things that the others didn't know. So it gave them more mana. And uh, the lifestyle that they lived not, a, not only included uh, fighting and the warriorship, but it also included the perpetuation of ceremonies. They were the guardians of the ceremonies. They were the uh, initiators of some ceremonies as well. Today, the Lua practitioners are uh, less aggressive, uh, not as knowledgeable, uh, because a lot of that knowledge disappeared after uh, Western contact, because it was banned. And there were just a very few uh, that kept the practice up. Uh, Pa Kui Alua, of which we are members of, our organization, was fortunate enough to, uh, to learn from a, a person that was uh, known to be one of the last survivors of the knowledge, and his name was Professor Charles Ken. So Alohi Ken taught five individuals, and those five individuals started up Pa Kui Alua in about 1994. And from that point on, our organization grew. We have, um, I would say, over 600 um, uh, that are members of the PA, but only 40 or so are really active. The others came because they wanted to know what Lua was, and they went through a 48-hour class, which is mandatory for our PA. And that 48 hours occurs over two week, three weekends in a row, and you learn basic strikes, uh, basic uh, haka or ha'a, and the philosophies behind uh, the Lua lifestyle. Yeah. And um, uh, you have to be 21 years of age, uh, male or female, and identify your lineage, your Hawaiian lineage. Um, people say, why aren't you teaching non-Hawaiians? And we will as soon as we've taught all the Hawaiians that want to learn. Uh, once they've learned, then we'll teach non-Hawaiians. Okay, but we want to be, uh, Charles Ken wanted us to make sure that we taught Hawaiians first because it is their property. Okay, uh, what I'd like to do now, the, the, before I do that, the strikes, the, the eyes, the information about Lua is normally done in secrecy. In Kahiko days, it was done in a pa, an encirclement, and the pa may, may be a fence of llama wood that encircled the entire practice area. And uh, it was done at night, so no one else well. um, the, Now, nowadays, we practice uh, in a high school, and we practice at night, 
and the doors are closed so no one else could come in and see. And if you wanted to ask to watch the practice, uh, we would kindly decline you, nicely decline you, because it's, we still hold that uh, practice private. The, the members to, uh, today learned what we call hakas or haas, uh, and they're merely um, dance routines, if you want to call it dance routines, that allow them to memorize different strikes and uh, develop muscle memory. Okay? And uh, again, normally we don't do this in public, but we will do one today, which is a very basic one, uh, called Kekawa Ai. And uh, I will ask the four gentlemen to come out and demonstrate this um, ha'a. And uh, they'll show you some strikes from the top and the bottom and through uh, the phases of the, the, the face. And the uh, last strike is a surprise strike. Surprise, bite to the throat. During practice, uh, we have about we practice once a week, and uh, it's about three hours. Um, in that practice session, and uh, if anybody makes a mistake, then they have to do it all over again. So sometimes with new members coming in, they all have to repeat this maybe five to ten times before uh, the Olohe will say, it's okay, now move to the next one. Uh, so it's the perfection that we're looking for. So the, the bite to the throat is only good if blood is drawn, you know, but uh, we don't practice that. <laughs> Uh, the Lua practitioner's main weapon was his hands. Okay. Uh, the weapons that you're going to see, if you haven't seen them already, on the tables that we have outside are Hawaiian weapons that a Lua practitioner might use. But his main weapon is his hands. He can also use his, his, um, his pule or his, his prayer to pray you to, uh, pray you to death using the type of uh, kahuna anana that um, is famous for um, witchcraft. Okay. Uh, other weapons that we do not have include a pololu, which is a, a battle pike that ranges anywhere from 12 to 22 feet long to keep your enemy at bay. You have uh, ihes that uh, could have barbs or barbless. Uh, then you have a thin ihe that is more like a javelin for long distance throwing. Then you have a kuia, the next size down, about uh, the, the height of the individual, and that's made for fencing. Uh, then you have a ko'o ko'o, which is a, a, uh, a cane. So the, the old story is be careful for the old man uh, wielding a, or carrying a cane because he knows how to use it. I'm not of age yet to, to carry a cane. But getting close, getting close. <laughs> Can I see, is there anybody with questions? Yes. The question up front is how many women do we have in our organization, our PA? Oh, plenty. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many? About half. Um, are, are women or close to it. Yeah. Uh, you, would you say half? Yeah. yeah. They said more or less. 
<laughs> yeah, about almost half uh, are women in our organization. Yeah, uh, women were um, were very valuable in battle. Uh, if they do the actual fighting as front lines, they were there to support their husband and pick up a weapon and hand it to him if he needed it, or watch their back. A famous Mo'olelo, if you want to look it up, is Cavello and his wife uh, defeating the, the giant uh, Kawahoa. It'll be interesting reading for you. Yeah. There's Anybody a, here? Over here to your left. Uh, yes, uh, why was um, the, that martial arts practice, what is it called again? Oh, um, why was the martial arts practice banned? Why was the martial arts practice then? Yeah. I'm banned. Sorry. Why was the banned. martial arts banned? Because it was too deadly. Um, when the missionaries came in to Hawaii, they, uh, they tried to uh, downplay not only the martial art, but also hula. Uh, remember, if you want to uh, eliminate a culture, you take away its language, which they did. You take away their um, religion, which they did. You take away their land, which they did. And you take away their warriorship, if you had a warriorship. Those elements there uh, eliminate a culture. And uh, so one of the, uh, the, um, the strategies was to eliminate the uh, martial art. Does that There's answer your question? So on the very opposite side, to your right. I'm curious, obviously the practice gives you great physical training and also the ability to defend yourself in an attack. Could you or your students talk about other ways that it's important in your daily life, in your work or? Sure. Everybody hear the question? Do we do anything else but practice Lua? Uh, or practice fighting, because Lua is a way of life for us. Um, in order to be a good warrior, no matter what culture you're in, you have to be well balanced. Um, balance is a key in, in uh, general life. You know, it doesn't include, I mean, doesn't, it's not restricted to uh, fighting uh, alone. In order to be a good person, you need to be balanced. And that doesn't mean 50-50. That means uh, finding your own balance, okay? And understanding that each of us have a, a male balance and a female balance, no matter if you're female or male, okay? So uh, for the Hawaiian um, uh, scenario, it would be ku and hina. Ku being the masculine, ku being the positive energy force, ku being the rigid, the, the stiff, and uh, the, the hina being the uh, negative energy force, uh, but being flexible uh, and being uh, 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 softer. Okay? And you need to identify, a lot of men identify themselves as being too much ku without a proper balance. With the two. Uh, some women are too much cool, too. Uh, let me tell you. Uh, but you need to balance yourself off. And that also means you balance yourself off uh, with situations within the day. So if I'm talking to younger children and to ladies, then I'm going to be using more of my Hina side. Okay? If I'm talking to uh, rowdy guys, then uh, I'm going to be using more of my cool side. Okay, so you balance yourself off according to the situation as much as the daily activity. Okay, uh, it's very important. And uh, uh, if you take a look at our weapons, on my side, I added a nose flute. Okay, and nose flute is a, an instrument used uh, for romance. You would call your wife or you call your lover out with a nose flute and uh, to just show some softness on my side. Uh, on the other side, these guys brought their uh, ukeke. Ukeke is another instrument um, used by lovers and such. It's the only Hawaiian string instrument. Um, and unfortunately, you, uh, it, uh, uh, it creates a situation where uh, they really can't talk to their, uh, 
their lover, uh, which is good. Uh, because a lot of people ask, what do you, why do you blow the, the nose fluid out, out of your nose instead of the mouth? And I really don't know the answer. Uh, and I've never been able to find the answer um, educationally. But my own theory, and don't go tell everybody this is uh, historical, just tell them that Umi said is okay. Uh, Umi says that when you blow the nose flute, it doesn't lie. Your mouth can lie. Okay? So when you call in your lover, you don't want to be lying to her. Okay? So that's the theory. So balance, knowing that you have both sides, your ku and your hina, is very, very important. Okay? Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we're also, I also make fish nets and fish hooks and um, implements for making kappa. Uh, I, I make uh, toys for the grandchildren. We have 14 grandchildren. Uh, so we, we do more than just uh, uh, hardcore, aggressive fighting. Yeah. We do less of that, in fact. The, the gentlemen that you'll see at their booths make all kinds of stuff, including trouble. Yeah, so, uh, any other questions? There's another question in the back to your left. Way back. Aloha. So I'm wondering, if with the Lua, how come you guys haven't explored the option of teaching the, just the Hakka in the Kamehameha School? I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat that? I, I'm, I'm seven years old and I can't hear that well. <laughs> Why haven't you thought about um, teaching just the Hakka, not doing the entire martial arts, but oh. in order to generate more interest among the yeah. uh, Native Hawaiian children in the Kamehameha schools? Okay. Uh, Everybody hear the question, why don't we teach the haka to everybody or other people so that it develops more interest? Because it's part of lua, and uh, that's a section that uh, if they're interested, then that's where they would learn it. Uh, we can't be teaching uh, par portions of it out and uh, uh, not staying true to the, the, the identity of lua. Uh, so the haka uh, is part of it. And uh, I don't want to separate it. Anybody else? Question. Another question. Anybody else before everybody yeah, leaves? I think there's two more questions. One here. Um, yeah, I heard, Ho um, I heard Hawaii used to have a king. Is that true? King, yeah. Used to have a king. king? Yeah. 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 The Hawaiian Islands was. Um, was occupied by all, all the islands are occupied by Hawaiians because a lot of people think that there are different uh, types of tribes like they have in um, the continent US uh, or in Africa, they have different tribes within in Africa or in the continental US. And uh, the Hawaiian islands was all the same people, okay? But they had kings of each island. And sometimes a king uh, would would be separating the islands, and so there'll be two or three kings on one island, depending on how big your resources are. Okay. And uh, the kings had their queens. And those kings and queens were all determined by your birthright. Uh, you could become king like Kamehameha did through conquering. So you may not have had the uh, highest birthright, but because you were conquering the islands, you could become king. Okay, so you get there two ways. Okay, is that all right? Okay. Greetings. In terms of comparison to other martial arts, like kung fu, or or, or in comparison to other martial arts, like kung fu, what comparisons would there be? Helen, can you? Okay. Uh, Oh. Yeah, how would you compare to other martial arts? Yeah. Uh, comparing um, techniques from other martial arts is, is really not fair. Um, the Hawaiian martial art uh, had a different uh, intent. The other martial arts were more defensive um, in their moves. Uh, for Lua, however, the first move you make is a pali, is a backward move. 
Okay? If we're walking down the street, as an example, and we see trouble uh, walking up that street, we would cross the street, try to get away from the trouble. But if we could not get away from the trouble, then uh, the first move would be to uh, end it with one or two blows. So with the other martial arts, uh, you, you would be uh, more blows or more moves than the Hawaiian martial art would, artists would want to do. Yeah. Uh, you want to strike fast, strike clearly, and uh, decisively. A, a fight between two Lua martial artists should not uh, last longer than three blows. Okay. Not like the Kung Fu movies. Huh? Anybody else? Any other questions? Well, thank you. We're all finished. Yeah. Thank you very much. And mahalo to Office of Hawaiian Affairs and to Melanie. Mahalo. <laughs>